Today's top story from the perspective of someone who's there. You are looking live. This just in. Not my beat. Joining us, Scott Allen of the Washington Post. Of course, the D.C. Sports Bog. And uh, Scott, technically your beat on, on all the local media types of things. And um, we get the news today that we, we've known is coming for a long time. NBC Sports Washington is going to rebrand as Monumental Sports Network. This was always coming after Ted Leonsis bought it. But ultimately, through your eyes, what does this mean? Yeah, good to be here, Craig. Um, no su- real surprises today, I would say. I mean, as you mentioned, um, ever since Ted purchased the remaining control of of NBC Sports Washington last August, they said a rebrand was coming. They said an investment in the network was coming. And today, I guess we finally get to see some of the details of what that will look like, because we basically went through last Capitals and Wizard season with things looking pretty much the same, um, both on the NBC Sports Washington website um, on the broadcasts. Um, today we get the new name, which is really kind of an old name because it's what the digital platform for Monumental Sports and Entertainment was called when it launched in uh, 2016. Um, but I think there is there are some exciting elements in there, um, both to the live game broadcast where we're talking mic'd up, more mic'd up players and coaches, new camera angles. Um, and then something that the network has been lacking in recent years in terms of original programming. So magazine style shows about um, the Caps and Wizards, a countdown show, uh, airing of classic Wizards, Capitals and Mystics games and such. And uh, a new, maybe the highlight of it all, the the biggest name anyway, a new uh, interview series hosted by uh, Potomac, Maryland's Rachel Nichols. Yeah, um, I, I thought there was a great quote in your story where I think it was Zach Leonsis said, you know, I, I tell my staff I don't want air fryer commercials in the middle of the day anymore, um, yeah. which, you know, I, I feel like for the previous times we've had you on the show, an air fryer commercial is something we possibly could have discussed during a segment. <laughs> Absolutely. I in Before I talked to Zach about this, I actually turned on NBC Sports Washington to see what was airing um, at noon on a random weekday. And no joke, it was some program called the Larry King Prostate Report. So for him oh. to then make that air fryer joke, I was like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of junk uh, filling the airwaves uh, on that channel uh, outside of game coverage. So I, I think that, that that's definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah, uh, Scott Allen, Washington Post with us. So from where I sit, this is big time positive, big time negative type of thing. Um, and I think that the investment they're making is incredible. I think as a consumer of the game, you ultimately want like the best product. The fact that the sideline reporters are going to always be there. These mic'd up segments, yep. the kind of access is incredible. It's the kind of stuff you dream of having as a consumer. There's also, yep. for lack of a better way to put it, the state media element of it. How much do you think the fact that the the team owner is the same as the network yeah. owner truly affects the coverage? Forget like, you know, being critical of of roster moves and stuff and we talk we keep it in the box of the game like how how free do you feel like the NBC Sports Washington soon to be monumental sports talent is to you know be real if there's poor performances especially in light of the fact that the Wizards are probably not going to be good for a while yeah yeah I think that's going to be one of the more the more interesting things to watch going forward because it's a question people have been raising since uh Ted bought one third of I think what was then Comcast Sports Center, NBC Sports Washington back in, in 2016. Um, yeah, I think if come January and the Wizards are 30 games under 500 and everything's, you know, flowers and rainbows on the game broadcast with, you know, Chris Miller talking about the team, <laughs> that that can and, and should be, you know, called out and, and made fun of. Um, it won't be, I don't think, by Monumental Sports Network employees. But uh, yeah, I think that's, that's absolutely something to watch. I think traditionally, you know, even for, I think TV broadcasts, you know, teams that have relationships with these networks, even if they're not wholly owned um, by the owners of those teams, they've traditionally been a little bit more, you know, with a more of a Homer slant um, than, than other forms of media. But yeah, in this case, It'll be certainly something to watch because it is a, a more interesting situation with, you know, Ted Leonsis' monumental sports and entertainment owns these three teams that it's uh, broadcasting games on. 
What, is there precedent for this? I mean, I guess Yes Network in New York is owned by the Yankees. Yeah. Like, what what's kind of the precedent for this level of control over? And because it's not just you know the game broadcast, Scott. Like, there's not right. another local regional sports net in New York. There's SNY. There's Yes. Like. There, there's, and the way New York operates, everyone wants to be mad at the team anyway. But like in DC, it's NBC Sports Washington, soon to be Monumental Sports Network. And that's the only like local regional sports TV game in town. Yeah. So like, what does that mean for, you know, kind of the the media ecosystem or the media ecosystem and, and what precedent do we have for it? Yeah, in terms of number of teams under the control, I don't know that there is precedent. You mentioned Yes Network and that was, that's what immediately came to mind when, when the purchase was completed um, last August. I think, uh, you know, kind of getting to your question, um, some more fallout of this is, is in terms of what teams uh, Monumental Sports Network is choosing to cover. I think it was no secret from the start that they were going to invest more in the teams that, that they own, and, and they've done that. I mean, we've already seen, um, as I mentioned in the piece today, and, and my colleague Ben Strauss had reported about a few months ago, the commander's coverage on NBC, NBC Sports Washington.com had basically faded completely away. And we find that the team didn't reach a deal um, with Monumental to continue pregame and postgame coverage this year. Uh, I think that's going to be really interesting to see um, whether, I mean, Zach told me, Zach Leonard has told me uh, ahead of this story coming out that they have no plans for a football focused show. I mean, which seems silly for any network to ignore talking about the NFL and specifically the uh, a local network talking about the local NFL team. So I think it's going to be really interesting to watch in the next few months um, when the commander's sale is finalized, uh, if some sort of deal can be reached where the commanders will again have a presence on the network as they had for years when it was, you know, Comcast Sportsnet, uh, then NBC Sports Washington. Scott Allen, Washington Post with us here on the Team 980. All right, time for the incestuous question, Scott. Uh, the Junkies are still going to be simulcast. Uh, and, of course, now they are the morning show, not only on the 106.7 The Fan, uh, our Odyssey brethren, but on this station as well with the simulcast. Uh, this might be a better question for my bosses, but like, what does it mean for them? And, and that relationship is kind of the one entity that is independent, yeah. not something that is produced by Monumental. Yeah, that was one of my main questions for for Zach and, and him talking about sort of this original program that was the original programming that was going to fill you know the time before games and you know what it used to be for used for infomercials and obviously the junkies that's a that's a long time slot in the mornings um, that I, I was curious if it was going to continue once the rebrand takes effect in September and he said it is um, and then also I guess news that is uh, pertinent to to you and Commanders fans out there and, and related to uh, 106.7 The Fan. Um, I, I asked also about the um, recently rebranded re Beltway Football uh, podcast, right. um, which started at NBC Sports Washington with, uh, obviously, J.P. Finley, Mitch Tischler, and Pete Haley, who really were producing most of the daily Commanders coverage for NBC Sports Washington. And so while there's not going to be a football-focused show broadcast on the network, Zach Leontz has said that the podcast um, will continue under the Monumental Sports Network umbrella, um, which, again, I mean, I think that just kind of adds to the intrigue over is Commander's coverage really gone for good on Monumental Sports Network, or is there a chance that, that it comes back in, in some form um, down the road? Well, there's nothing going on over there. There's no, there's no changes in leadership. No. There's no potential changes in business personnel. So, you know, clearly everything is going to stay status quo forever. Um, that's right. That's I, right. There's that something goes to the Nats too, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. And actually, that's something else. Um, I, you know, I, I, we have uh, your colleague Chelsea Janes on the show today uh, talking about the yep. Masson deal, like. Is that the key that unlocks, you know, the ability to sell the Nationals? Could the Nationals become Ted Leonsis' yep. team or another? You know, there, there's a lot of, obviously, things down the road there. Uh, when those when we get to those bridges, we'll cross them and we'll call you back. Um, for right now, though, I, I one of the more interesting things that I, I thought uh, came out of your piece and the reporting and, and kind of their plans that have been unveiled here is the Manning cast type of idea. 
Um, the, let, how do we do a, a, a simultaneous broadcast, a second screen, or a second option broadcast? What are the plans for those? Like, who's going to be on them? How often they happen? And also, where are they going to air if, obviously, the main game is going to be on the main station? Yep. All great questions. And basically what Zach Leonsa said is that um, the alternate feeds are really going to take effect once this brand new studio um, opens adjacent to Capital One Arena sometime around the new year. And by which point Monumental Sports Network anticipates announcing more details of their uh, revamped digital platform. You know, I think a lot of today's news is about the programming that's going to be changed and introduced on the linear channel um and from the start they said they wanted to invest in that linear linear channel but i think down the road more pop the the greater room for growth and the way that this was headed once the purchase was made was um them sort of reimagining their digital platform, which again had launched in 2016 with things like Capital City Go-Go and you could, you could pay for Mystics games. It was subscription-based. But I think we're headed to a point where people, fans will be able to pay for over-the-top to direct consumer capitals and Wizards games without a cable subscription, which they, which they can't do now. And when you do that on the digital platform, you could have options for these alternate feeds where as I mentioned in the piece, and, and Zach talked about a, a Manning Cash style deal where you have, you know, former Bullets and Wizards greats sitting around. And yes, you're ostensibly watching the game, but they're kind of, you know, talking about other things, sharing stories, um, their thoughts on the team. He estimated that starting not this season, but the following season, roughly 100 games uh, between the Capitals and Wizards would have that alternate feed. Wow. Um, and it, it kind of reminds me of, you know, what the Clippers did. They announced earlier this year something called Clipper Vision. I don't know if you saw this, but basically you could pay, if you're a Clippers fan, you can pay $200 a year. You get access to roughly 70 Clippers broadcasts. You don't get the, the national broadcast, but included in that access, you can watch the game essentially six different ways. You can either just watch the straight broadcast. You can watch a Manning cast style thing. You could watch something called court vision that displays augmented reality with like shot probabilities in real time and such. Um, so I would be surprised if I, I would not be surprised if monumental doesn't roll out something like that. Um, but uh, they, they weren't prepared to talk about the, the revamped digital experience yet, but that's where the alternate feed experience would take place. Scott Allen, Washington Post with us, of course, DC Sports Bog. Uh, the big news today, Monumental Sports, rebranding NBC Sports Washington as Monumental Sports Network. Uh, and that is September, right, is when that officially switches over? That's right. Sometime in September. Yep. Ahead of the preseasons. So where where does this all go? And like, what I, I mean... To a point, Scott, I guess the question is like, what's the point of all this? This is obviously a business venture. Um, Ted Leonsis wants to make money. It was very clear at the Wizards intro presser. Like he sees himself as the head of this giant conglomerate that includes basketball teams, uh, includes a hockey team. It includes the esports team. Like he sees himself as over kind of this fiefdom, kingdom, whatever word you want to use, uh, you know, to describe this giant collection of assets, um, including multiple high level premier professional sports teams, but right. also a lot of other stuff that he cares about immensely. I'm not trying to say this in any kind of demeaning way. It's just like that there is, it's kind of unprecedented. So I don't really have the words for it. Is this, right. is the point to make money off of this and it's just a business and like that there's not more to that is the point of this to all ultimately build a fan base and, and, you know, hopefully make the wizards a more attractive place for free agents to help them win championships. Like how do the pieces interplay here? What is the, the, the top line highest item catch all point? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I guess I don't think it's cynical to say that the, the, Catch all point is to yeah make more money and it's build a business this thing. more power to it's, them it's, yeah build this thing even greater I think along the way it's it's probably you know introducing fans of the Capitals and Wizards to these other entities that that's part of the the MSC uh, 
network, right? I mean, should we just like start they, calling it the MSE multiverse? Like, should we, should we, <laughs> can we own this, Scott? Can you and I come up with the term? Let's do it. Are, are we going to care about Wizards District Gaming? <laughs> What do we do? We we care about all of it. That's the only way we can actually that that it could get credence. I want I want internal people to be using this term. I want Leonsis <laughs> to hear it and go, damn it, I wish I thought of that. And then I want him to pay us for it because I also would like to make money. <laughs> the MSE multiverse, owners yeah. of everyone but the commanders in DC. <laughs> that's the goal anyway. Nationals are coming I mean I, that that's that kind of seems like where it's headed, and I think Kind of echoing what I said earlier, I think a lot of people would see today's news and be like, what the heck are they investing into a linear channel, an RSN, given, you know, how many people are cutting the cord and and what's happening with RSNs around sports these days. But I really think this is kind of a precursor to um, the greater investment on on the digital side and some you know pretty great things for cord cutters in terms of finally being able to to you know whether it's maybe you can buy just a season's worth of capitals games if, if you're not a, that into the wizards i'm not sure that that's coming um but that seems like certainly a possibility um but yeah i just think the digital side and what they do with that and the announcements that are to come are, are kind of where this thing is going. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting as someone who is, I guess, technically I'm a cord cutter. I don't have a cable subscription, but like I have Fubo TV. It's just the one that I got, you know, your YouTube TVs, yep. your Hulus, your whatevers. And I had this discussion two months ago, I think it was with John Alrand. And it's like, are we just all headed back to cable? And I think this is a pretty, like if we, if we zoom out even more, this could be actually a kind of important inflection point because if they can create something where you veer away from this this vicious circle we seem to be on where we all got rid of cable and then we're mad yep. that we can't watch all the stuff that we want without a cable subscription and this other thing and we just wind up paying more for a worse experience. If they can actually make this a better experience, like this would seem rather important in the larger landscape of media. Yeah, no, I, I think absolutely. I mean, I'm one of the people who feels held hostage by NASA and that yeah. I only have cable so that I can watch the nationals and Orioles every night. It's ridiculous. Um, because I have streaming subscriptions on top of that out the wazoo. And yeah, I think, you know, I mentioned the, the Clipper vision earlier and a $200 price tag kind of sounds ridiculous, but no one's forcing you to pay it. And if you can go to the diehard, Clippers fans, and in this case, the diehard Wizards fans, and say, hey, it's going to be $152 for the season. A lot of people would happily pay it. You make money. They're happy. You're happy. All sorts of you know, programming options delivered directly to them, people that you know are fans. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of painful <laughs> right now, but I think we're, we're headed to a, a, a better place, and you know, we'll see how the league's continue to grapple with this. We just saw the Utah Jazz, you know, take kind of a drastic approach and create their own production company and announce that they're putting games on, you know, Bunny Ears TV starting next year. Yeah. Um, so, so lots of different uh, avenues and, and things that teams are exploring to try to respond to the, the changing landscape and, you know, Monumental is, is right there with them. I just hope that they run media companies better than media companies have run media companies <laughs> because as someone in the industry, like do I necessarily want to work for a team? No, because there is, even if you're told like, Hey, you have carte blanche, you can do whatever you want. Like it is always in the back of your head that ultimately you might be criticizing the person who signs your check. Like that is, that is a part or yeah. his, or his most important employee who's way more important to the company than you. Um, so the idea that all of this is shifting to teams is I think ultimately not a good thing, but on like, they've got other revenue streams that media companies don't media companies have to make money on media and monumental can yeah. make money on basketball and, and then do media. Um, and I just, unfortunately don't see a, like, I, I feel like this is a trend that's just going to continue and it's not one that's necessarily going to, if you, if you agree with the the premise that I've put forward here, get better. Yeah, no, I, I think that's right. And I think it's something that, you know, something that 
I and my colleagues, you know, Ben Strauss has written extensively on this, going to continue to watch. And I think there'll be chances to kind of check back in with um, Monumental Sports Network going forward once this thing does launch and, and things get rolling this season to to see, you know, just kind of what level of involvement there is and what type of editorial oversight there is and, and how, you know, fans re- react and, you know, whether it's obvious from from turning tuning into a Wizards or a Capitals game that the 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 game it's being broadcast on is is owned and, and operated by the owner of the teams involved. Yeah. All right. Last thing, real quick. Uh, when you you're working on a, a something for later in the week, longest tenured athletes in DC uh, with with Bradley Beal exiting after 11 years. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask you to give away the whole list. Uh, we want people to sure. go go get you the click. But what's the most surprising name that came up as you compiled the list? You couldn't believe that guy was that high or that that lady was that high on the list. Um, let's see. I've got some honorable mentions in here, and I'll I'll mention one of those. And I'm surprised was already kind of cracks the top ten to fifteen. Is is Jonathan Allen? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that's surprising at all to you. I don't know. Um, I've been. I covered John uh, when I was on right. the beat, and that feels like it was seventy-eight jobs ago for me, even though it was only like two. So, right, right. I, that one's that one's <laughs> for will, personal reasons not as surprising, I guess. But he's still young, so yeah, I guess that's that's yeah. surprising. I will say the top three are Caps. Mm-hmm. Number four is Steven Strasburg, and then number five is a soccer player, and I think you can probably guess who it is. Debuted. On April fourteenth, two thousand thirteen. Oh yeah, that would be that would be Tori Huster. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Second so we, overall pick or second second round pick, right? It's the uh, second yeah. pick of the Spirit in our inaugural year. Yeah, so. and she's been here literally ever since. Yeah. No, that's yep. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better because you know Tori <laughs> has like I was thinking that we were going to be like top five, and all of a sudden it was gonna, we were all going to be athletes that debuted in like 2015, 2016. So <laughs> thankfully, all right. not quite there yet. But not yeah. quite. Okay. All right. Um, Scott Allen, make sure you read that piece later in the week and all the coverage of, of the monumental sports stuff. Uh, really great piece, really interesting quotes from Zach Leonsis. Read it at WashingtonPost.com slash sports. Scott, always a pleasure, sir. And I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Absolutely, Craig. Thanks for having me.